do part two of the measurements lab. For this part of the lab, we're going to measure the density of an unknown salt solution. So I've got my salt solution here. I've actually got a little bit already in the grad cylinder. I've rinsed the grad cylinder with it um, to wash any possible contaminants out and also to coat the inside because there's always some liquid that wants to just stick on the inside. Um, and what I have in the grad cylinder, we're going to have as our starting. Um, it will we'll measure the starting mass and starting volume, and then we'll be adding samples to that um, to measure our density. Um, so as I said, we're measuring masses and measuring volumes. That way we can calculate the density of this solution. And the reason we want to calculate the density of this solution is because we can use that then to figure out the concentration of the salt solution. We can do that by comparing the density of this unknown solution to the density of known concentration solutions. And so when you get to the lab assignment, I have a plot of density versus concentration for salt solutions. And you can utilize that plot. And actually, I fit a trend line to it. And there's an equation there. So you can actually mathematically calculate it from it. Um, but based on the density that we get, you essentially can calculate the concentration or even look at the graph and draw a line from you know, the density that you find to the trend line and down to the concentration on the x-axis. Um, it's essentially the same as mathematically calculating it. Uh, so what we need to do is measure mass and volume for several samples of this salt solution. We're going to do five trials. We're going to do it all in this 100 mil grad cylinder and we're going to do them back to back. So as I said, we have that starting solution in there. We're going to leave that in there um, and that will give us our kind of zero reading. And then we'll add, you know, a sample about 10 to 15 milliliters of our salt solution. We will take a new mass and volume reading. And so we will have initial mass and final mass and initial volume and final volume um, corresponding to that 10 to 15 mil portion that we are going to be adding. And so then you can take the final values and subtract the initial, and that'll give you the mass and volume of what we have added. Once you have those masses and volumes, um, you can divide and it will give you density. So you'll do that for every single trial. You'll get a density for trials one through five, and then you'll average those. And all of that information, um, you're going to enter into your assignment on Blackboard, the lab assignment. So if you look on Blackboard, you will also see I have posted a data sheet um, just to kind of help you organize the data. You don't have to print it out and use that because you're going to be typing this stuff into Blackboard, but it gives you a general idea of um, how to lay out the data because that's going to be how you type it in on Blackboard. Uh, but right now, we're just collecting the masses and the volumes, or the initial and final. Um, the rest of that stuff you need to calculate. So let's get started. So we have this, as I said, um, I've already got some solution in there, but that's going to be our zero point. So we're going to get an initial mass. So notice we've got the balance here. It's already zeroed out. And so I'm just going to put that grad cylinder on. And I'm going to write down that initial mass. So the initial mass is 133.52 grams. Um, and then we need to measure volume to do that. I'm going to raise it up. We need to read from the bottom of the meniscus. Uh, and we need to get it kind of at eye level. So eye level for the camera isn't necessarily that easy. But we will do our best here. I don't expect it to turn out perfect, but let's see. It looks kind of like the bottom of that meniscus is right at that 12 mark to me. So I would call it 12.0 milliliters for our initial volume. Okay, so we have our initial volume and our initial mass. And then what we need to do is we need to add some of our salt solution. And so as I said, we're going to be adding, you know, 10 to 15 mil portions. And 
so we just don't want to um, have too small of a portion where our mass change or volume change is so small that it messes up or not messes up it uh, minimizes the accuracy um, because it would reduce our sig figs and so let's see we can go ahead and weigh this out again and so our mass after adding the sample for trial one the final mass is 149.25 and then we can again measure the volume so let's see we're between the 20 and 30 and specifically we're really close to the 27, but it looks like we're a hair below. So I'm going to call that 26.9 for our volume. So if we're at 26.9 for our final volume for trial one. Then you could take that final volume, you could subtract the initial, that would give you the volume of that sample that I added, and then you could do the same with the masses, take the final and subtract the initial, that will give you the mass of that, um, and then you take the mass divided by the volume, it gives you density. Okay, so we'll continue, we're going to keep doing this process, I will add about 10 to 15 mils to the cylinder. What you should realize is it doesn't matter exactly how much I add, no matter how much substance I add, the density is, should be constant because it's the same substance. Because density is an intrinsic property of that substance, or we can call it an intensive property. It doesn't depend on amount, okay? Um, and so whether I measure it of 10 mils or 15 mils or 20 mils, it should always come out with the same density. Of course, what you'll notice on the trials is it's going to be a little bit different because there's always some experimental error. Okay, so we have a mass now of 165.60. Now, I want to point out, I didn't, before I added that sample, I didn't weigh this, or at least, at least not right before, but our final mass from trial one is our initial mass for trial two. So you can transfer that final mass from trial one to initial for trial two, and then write down this 165.60 as the final mass for trial two, okay? And then the same goes for the volume. Um, I didn't take an initial volume right before I added that portion, not really, um, but it's the same as the final volume of trial one. So now what we're gonna be doing is taking the final volume reading. So, let's see. I'm getting pretty close to the line, but I don't know. That's a little bit over. We're going to call that, I would say, 42.2. Okay. So we're going to say 42.2. Again, that, that second or that decimal place, that's our estimate. And so it, it kind of is based on how, you know, how you see it. Really, you should be at eye level and everyone should read the same thing, but it's an estimate. And so I might say it's about 0.2 and you might say it's about 0.3. And that's okay. Um, you have to have that estimated digit. So that was trial two. Now again, we can move those final values we just took into the initial mass and volume slots for trial three. So I'm going to go ahead and add my portion for trial three. And then we will again measure mass and volume. Okay. So let's see. We've got the final mass for trial three is 180.67. Maybe 
Levy. We were at 180.68. Let me change that. No, no, no. We'll leave it at 67. Okay, so sometimes drafts or if I accidentally lean on the table, it can affect the balance. So I'm not leaning on the table and I'm trying not to wave around it. Um, but again, that last digit is where the error is at. Um, but we will, uh, I'll, I'll change it to 68 since that's where it seems to want to stay. Okay. Then, let's see, volume, uh, okay, it's getting trickier to hold level here, mm, too hot, eh? Light shining off of that. It's not making it easy, but it's between 56 and 57, and I'd even say it's probably close to halfway. So we will say 56.5 for our final volume for trial three. 56.5. Okay. So, again, transfer the final mass and volume to the initial for trial four. And then, again, we will add about 10 to 15 mils of water, not water, salt solution. I probably have said water a few times, but it is a salt solution. And then we will weigh it. Let's see, it's 196.13 grams, and then let's see what we have for a volume. So, I can get level here. should be about right, so we're past the 71, but not a ton, maybe 71.3. So we're going to say 71.3 for that one. For the final volume for trial four. Okay, so we'll move those final values to initial for trial five. And then we can add our last portion of salt solution. Okay, so I've added my last portion. We're gonna weigh that. So let's see, we have 211.10 for our final mass. and 86 and mm, I quit shaking we'll say 85.4 so 85.4 okay so now we have all of our initial and final masses and volumes so again you need to take the final values minus the initial, that will give you the mass and the volume for each trial. And then you take the mass, divide by the volume, that's gonna give you the density of each trial. And then you can average those. And that average is what you're gonna work with to figure out the concentration of this unknown solution, okay? And then you just need to answer the questions that are associated with this part with the lab assignment.